Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here and I have another miniatures video for you. In today's video we're going to be looking at how to transfer paint from pots like this to dropper bottles like this. Though I used a Citadel paints throughout this video to demonstrate my process, you could also use it for transferring paints from other brands like Privateer Press that use pots. Before we actually get into the process, I want to briefly outline why I choose to transfer my paints, because it is a time-consuming process. The primary reason that I transfer my paints uh, to bottles is to reduce the amount of spoilage or loss of paint that I have. There's a couple ways that I lose paint because of uh, paint pots. First, I lose a bit of paint uh, from the fact that the pots don't really get clean, close cleanly often, either because there's bits of paint or I just don't close it completely. So either I have to work out all that extra paint that's just lost, or I sometimes forget to seal them correctly and they end up drying out a bit. The other more painful way, and very meme-tastic way, of course, it, with Citadel pots, is to knock over one of the tall pots of shade and have it spill out on you, which is really frustrating. In addition to saving yourself some paint, using dropper balls, I personally find it easier to pour out paint onto your palette in a controlled way so you know exactly how much paint you have for doing ratios and things like that. Also, as part of the process, we're going to be thinning and putting some additives in our paint that I think that are used to make it easier to transfer. These changes are also what I'd be doing on the palette anyway to make Citadel paints more workable, so I'm effectively getting those adjustments in for free. So to begin the discussion of the process, I first want to go through the various tools that you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need some paints to transfer. This process will work for most types of Citadel paints, with the exception being their dry paints, though the process will be slightly different for shade and contrast paints. We're going to need some sort of funnels to transfer the paint. These are some cheap ones I got in a 10-pack from Amazon. I'll put links down below for all the non-standard tools that I'm going to be using in this video. There are a couple additives that we're going to be using. Specifically, we're going to need Vallejo's Airbrush Flow Improver, which I have here in a big bottle, and then Vallejo's uh, Thinner Medium, which unfortunately I only have in a smaller bottle at the moment. We're also going to need a couple containers for water. One for our funnels to be tossed into after use to keep the paint from drying out on them before we get a chance to clean them off. And a second one of clean water that we're going to be using for thinning our paints. For actually transferring, you're either going to need an eyedropper like I have here, or you can use a pipette. Just make sure that whatever you're using has graduated markings for measuring. We're going to need some uh, dropper bottles. Again, I got these ones from Amazon. For the standard sized, smaller Citadel pots, I use 15 milliliter bottles, which gives us some room for our additives. For the contrast paints, I use 20 milliliter bottles, and for the larger air slash shade style pots, I use 30 milliliter bottles. The 30 milliliter bottles are a touch large, but there really wasn't an, a good in-between size between them and the 20 milliliter bottles, which are just too small. In addition to thinning the paints, I add some agitators to make the paints easier to shake later. I use hematite beads for this. I happen to have two different sizes because I got them from two different suppliers, but in general the size doesn't really matter too much. You're mostly going to want to make sure that you're not using such small beads that they clog the nozzle of your dropper bottle. I use hematite beads because they are relatively low cost and non-reactive. Stainless steel beads are also low cost, but do have the chance of rusting and thus staining your paint. Hematite is made of iron oxides, so it's not going to rust on you because it's effectively already rusted. Ceramic and glass beads are non-reactive in general, but are, tend to be more expensive, though if you can find a source for them at a good price, they'll work just as well as the hematite beads that I use. Now let's actually move on to transferring some paints. The process I'm going to detail works well for both base and layer paints. After I finish detailing it, I'm going to also discuss how I change it for things like air, shade, and contrast paints. The first step of transferring our paints is going to make sure that they've been very well mixed, i.e. the pigment and medium are not separated and the consistency is smooth. 
pay special attention to any citadel paints that have their white uh, base in them like Corax white and things like that since they tend to go chunky in the pot and you really want to work out all those lumps before trying to transfer them. Now that we have our well mixed paints uh, we can move on to actually transferring. For each paint the first step I do is transfer the label from the pot to the new bottle. You should be able to get your fingernail under the corner of the label and peel it off relatively easily. I personally trim off the kind of excess barcode sections at the ends of the label since otherwise they're too large for my bottles anyway. You can then just stick it on the bottle starting in the middle of the label and smoothing it out around the edges. I next put a funnel in the bottle so I don't have to find it later. To ease pouring I use a bit of sticky tack to keep the funnel stable and to make sure that there is an air gap on the edge. The air gap helps uh, for pouring so that air doesn't have to bubble up through the paint to escape. Now on to uh, actually prepping our paints uh, for transferring. I first cut the little tabs keeping the lid attached to the pot since we're going to uh, need to be com able to completely remove the lid anyway uh, as part of the pouring process and just, just going to get in the way. I then uh, put in about a half milliliter of our thinner medium and a milliliter of our flow improver. I only use these bottles here for transferring paints, so I'm not too concerned about cross-contamination, but if you are concerned about that because you're using uh, these mediums for other things, rinse the eyedropper between uh, transferring each um, uh, liquid so you don't contaminate the other bottles. I then add a, uh, about a milliliter of water to the pod. We're going to be adding a bit more water later, so I don't want to go overboard with it right now unless the paint is particularly thick, <coughs> canter blue. Uh, now we pop the lid back on the container and give it a good shake. Now we can pour our paints into our funnel to transfer. When pouring, start slowly and try not to pour too much at any one time and causing it to back up. Uh, also try to pour directly down the center since any paint that is on the funnel surface itself is going to be slower moving and it will take longer to uh, drain down into the bottle and some of the, uh, that paint will just get lost in the process. We're not expecting to get all of the paint out in this first pour, so only pour until the flow, uh, flow starts turning into dripping, and then stop pouring. Now we're going to add some more water to thin out the remainder of the paint in the pot. For base paints, you're probably going to be needing another full milliliter of water, though it really depends on the specific paint. For layer and other paints, you're probably going to want to be using less uh, than a full milliliter of water here. You're going to really just have to eyeball it for consistency to get it thin enough to easily pour out of the pot, but not so thin that it negatively affects the consistency of the rest of your paint. This doubly thinned paint will need to be shaken a bit, and then we can pour it out into the funnel just as we did before. This time, once it starts stripping, you can tip over the pot into the funnel to let the ends drip out into the funnel. You're not going to want to leave this for too long turned over though, only a couple of minutes, since the paint will begin to dry and we're not uh, going to be getting a ton more paint out at this point. There will be some leftover paint in the pot, which will be uh, which is lost by the transferring process, but this is much less uh, than the paint we lose from having dried bits in the rim of our pots, or putting too much out on our palette, or heaven forbid knocking over or not closing our paints uh, correctly. The old pot and lid can be put to the side at this point to be cleaned up and disposed of later. The funnel can be removed and tossed into our water container until we get around to cleaning it up after we're done transferring. Now we're going to put our agitators of choice into the bottle. I use a little one and a big one here since I have a mix of them, but there's not, I, other than putting two in so that it helps mix it, there's not really any special uh, uh, magic to what, which ones I chose. Next, we're going to put in the nozzle, and then we can put uh, the lid on, and we're done. If you're not sure about the consistency of a paint, especially if this is your first time transferring paints, it is worthwhile at this point to test a spot of uh, the paint out just to see what the consistency is like, since this is the time that you can really go in and change things by adding a little bit more flow medium or water to it. So the process that I've discussed so far is orientated uh, towards transferring base and layer paints, which have a thicker consistency. For other types of paints like air, shade, and contrast, we're going to have to adjust uh, the recipe a little bit. 
For air paints, they're basically uh, base uh, or layer paints, but thinned uh, uh, already with a better flow agent in it. So we don't really need to put nearly as much additive into it. I pretty much uh, skip the airbrush uh, flow improver and put about half the amount of water in for air paints. Though I do keep all of the thinner medium since I want to keep its uh, drying retarding properties. For shades and glaze paints, I t uh, pretty much use no additives since they're already so thin already. Uh, I do the first pour from uh, pot consistency and then add a little bit of water after so that I can swish it around a bit and get the remaining of the p uh, pigments out. But I really don't want to be adding a ton of water uh, to uh, the contrast, or not contrast, uh, shade paints. Finally, for contrast paints, since they use a completely different medium from our standard Citadel paints, I skip all the additives and water uh, recipe stuff I described before. Instead, I do the first pour again at pot consistency and then use a bit of contrast medium, which I've already transferred to a dropper bottle uh, to help with getting out the remnants from the uh, edges of the pot. For transferring paints, I tend to do them in small batches four to 10 at a time, since I don't want to spend all evening pouring out paints and such. And since there's a bit of shaking involved and such, I don't really want to tear out my shoulder or anything like that, which is too much shaking by doing like 20 bottles at once. I had a large collection uh, somewhere on the order of 100 of Citadel paints uh, to transfer, so it took me a few months to transfer everything doing a couple of batches a week. Though this was a time-intensive project, I have been much happier with my Citadel paints since uh, having completed it and been getting better results because of uh, the use of dropper balls for mixing and having just a better consistency, pot consistency that I'm using. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, uh, please give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this on miniatures and painting, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If there are any topics that you would like me to cover in the future, uh, please comment down below or reach out on social media. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.